On January 22, 1970, Pan Am's first 747 was supposed to revolutionize air travel. The inaugural flight from New York to London would carry 350 passengers, double than any plane before it. But there was something nobody understood about this aircraft. That distinctive hump on top, the feature that made the 747 instantly recognizable, existed because Boeing had designed the plane backwards. They didn't start with passengers and add cargo capability. They started with cargo and accidentally created the most luxurious passenger experience in aviation history. The hump wasn't a design choice. It was a design constraint that became an icon. To understand the 747's hump, we need to go back to 1965. Boeing was competing for a massive military contract, the C-5 Galaxy transport plane. The Air Force wanted something that could carry tanks, trucks, entire helicopters. Boeing's design lost. Lockheed won the contract. But Boeing's engineers had spent years working on this huge cargo hauler. And they weren't about to waste that work. The military plane they designed had one key feature. The cockpit was positioned high up, out of the way of a massive cargo bay. Boeing had an idea. What if we turn this military cargo design into a passenger plane? It was an enormous gamble. In 1965, the biggest passenger plane in the world carried about 180 people. Boeing was proposing to build one that could carry 400. Company's president, William Allen, was betting everything on this idea. Literally. The development costs would be around $1 billion, which was more than Boeing's entire market value at the time. But Pan Am's president, Juan Trippi, wanted exactly this kind of plane. He believed that bigger planes would make flying cheaper and bring air travel to the masses. Here's the thing about cargo planes. You need to be able to load stuff from the front. Massive pieces of equipment that won't fit through a regular door. So cargo planes have these giant nose doors that swing up like a drawbridge. Boeing kept this feature in their passenger version, which meant they also had to keep the raised cockpit design. The pilots needed to sit above the cargo door mechanism, even on the passenger variant. So when Boeing adapted their military design for passengers, they inherited this elevated cockpit. And that left them with this space behind the cockpit that wasn't being used. That became the hump. This project nearly bankrupted Boeing. Development costs spiraled from $1 billion to over $2 billion. That's about $17 billion in today's money. The company had to borrow more money than it had ever borrowed before. By 1971, Boeing was in serious trouble. Sales were slow, cash was running out, and they had to lay off more than half their workforce. There was a joke going around Seattle at the time. Will the last person leaving Seattle please turn out the lights? The 747 was such a risky bet that if it failed, Boeing would have gone out of business entirely. Building the 747 meant building an entirely new factory. The plane was so big that Boeing had to construct what became the world's largest building by volume in Everett, Washington. Factory was built so quickly that they started assembling the first 747 before the roof was even finished. The plane itself was a massive engineering challenge. At 363 feet long with a 211-foot wingspan, it was larger than the Wright brothers' first flight distance. The fuel tanks in the wings could hold enough jet fuel to drive a car around the world four times. The nose cargo door that justified the hump's design is actually an engineering marvel. The entire front section of the plane, everything forward of the cockpit, pivots upward on two massive hinges. The door is operated by a small electric motor that drives two threaded shafts through gearboxes on either side of the nose. Think of it like a giant screw jack system. The motor turns the screws, which pushes the nose section up and away from the fuselage. But it takes about one minute to fully open the door, revealing a cargo bay that can accommodate items up to 185 feet long and 12.5 feet wide. That's long enough to fit an entire Boeing 737 fuselage if you needed to transport one. The nose door has 16 separate latch mechanisms that secure it during flight. When the 747 entered service with Pan Am in January 1970, it changed everything about air travel. The first flight was supposed to happen on January 21st, but the plane had engine problems. They had to substitute a different 747, which delayed the inaugural flight by six hours. Despite the rocky start, the 747 immediately revolutionized flying. It could carry 350 to 400 passengers compared to the 150 to 180 that previous jets carried. This massive capacity meant airlines could sell tickets for much less money. Before the 747, Flying across the Atlantic cost about $4,500 in today's money. After the 747, that dropped to around $1,800. Air travel went from being exclusively for the wealthy to something the middle class could afford. That hump, the upper deck, became the most prestigious space in aviation. Airlines realized they could charge premium prices for those seats because passengers felt like they were somewhere special. Pan Am put a cocktail lounge up there. TWA installed a piano bar. 
Flying in the 747's upper deck in the 1970s was like being in an exclusive club at 35,000 feet. The upper deck only had about 50 seats compared to the 350 on the main deck. This scarcity made it even more desirable. Passengers who flew up there felt like they were part of an elite group. The success of the 747 prompted other manufacturers to jump into the wide-body market. McDonnell Douglas launched the DC-10 in 1971. Lockheed followed with the L-1011 TriStar in 1972. But both the DC-10 and L-1011 were smaller planes, around 300 passengers compared to the 747's 400. And neither had the cargo flexibility of the 747. They were designed as passenger planes from the start. This turned out to be a crucial difference. When passenger demand dropped during economic downturns, the 747 could be converted to cargo service. The DC-10 and L-1011 couldn't match this versatility. While everyone focuses on the 747's passenger service, its cargo capability has been just as important. The 747 freighter can carry 140 tons of cargo, more than any other aircraft in regular service. Right now, 747 freighters are carrying everything, from race cars to live elephants to spacecraft components, all loaded through that massive nose door that originally justified the hump design. The ability to load extremely long or wide cargo straight through the front of the plane makes the 747 irreplaceable for certain types of shipping. Try loading a wind turbine blade or a power plant generator on any other aircraft. Today, most airlines treat the upper deck like any other passenger space. They cram in as many economy seats as possible, losing the sense of exclusivity that made it special. But some airlines still understand what makes the hump unique. Singapore Airlines uses their A380 upper deck for first-class suites, that cost $15,000 per ticket. Emirates has a bar and lounge area. These airlines get it. The upper deck isn't just extra space, it's a different experience. The cargo versions of the 747, meanwhile, are still being built. While Boeing stopped making passenger 747s in 2023, the freighter version continues because nothing else can do what it does. When Airbus designed their competitor to the 747, the A380, they made a completely different choice. Instead of a hump, they made the entire plane double-decker. Maximum passenger space, no cargo flexibility. The A380 could carry up to 850 passengers, compared to the 747's 400. On paper it seemed like the obvious evolution of the wide-body concept. But that the A380 program failed. Airbus delivered only 251 planes before shutting down production in 2021. Airlines found the plane too big and inflexible. They preferred smaller, more efficient aircraft that could serve more routes. The 747's hump represents something important about aircraft design. Sometimes the best solutions come from solving a different problem than the one you end up with. Boeing designed a cargo plane that happened to make an excellent passenger plane. It's the raised cockpit that was necessary for cargo operations, created premium passenger space that airlines could monetize. This dual-purpose design gave the 747 incredible longevity. So the next time you see a 747, remember, you're looking at a cargo plane that accidentally became the most iconic passenger jet in history. That hump exists because Boeing needed somewhere to put the pilots while massive cargo gets loaded through the front. The luxury, the recognition, the passenger experience, all of that was just a bonus. Sometimes the best innovations come from solving problems you didn't know you had.